so he should follow us and then wish us i pratyu you and your dear anya are hail and lp it's actually this complete of closer yesterday back with a share the like for my channel for video on the handle of publication on youtube today 2nd of september 2020 topic for discussion today is group dynamics team building group dynamic is a system of behaviors and psychological process occurring within a social group intra group dynamic or between social groups intra group dynamic the study of group dynamics can be useful in understanding decision making behavior tracking the spread of diseases in society creating effective therapy techniques and following the emergence and popularity of new ideas and technology group dynamics are the key to understanding racism sexism and other forms of social prejudice prejudice and uh, discrimination these applications of the field are studied in psychology sociology anthropology political science epidemiology education social work business and managerial studies as well as communication studies the history of group dynamics or group process as a consistent underlying premise the whole is greater than the sum of its parts synergy a social group is an entity that has qualities which cannot be understood just by studying the individuals that make up the group gestalt psychologist rax wert heino proposed there are entities where the behavior of the group cannot be derived from its individual elements not from the way these elements fit together rather the opposite is true the properties of any of the parts are determined by the intrinsic structural laws of the whole the as a field of study group dynamics as groups both in psychology as well as sociology wilhelm wundt credited as the founder of experimental psychology had a particular interest in the psychology of communities which he believed was a phenomena that could not be described through a study of individual on the sociological side emil durkheim who was influenced by wundt also recognized collective phenomena such as public knowledge other key theories include gustav leba who believed that crowds possess a racial unconsciousness with a primitive aggressive and antisocial instinct and william dogal mcdogal who believed in a group mind which had a distinct existence born from the interaction of individuals eventually the social psychologist kurt levin coined the term group dynamics to describe the positive and negative forces within groups of people in 1945 established the group dynamics research center at the massachusetts institute of technology the first institute developed devoted explicitly to the study of group dynamics so mid was formed mainly to study of group dynamics it's one of the popular institute for management studies in the world throughout his career levin was focused on how the study of group dynamics could be applied to real world social issues increasingly researchers apply evolutionary psychology principles to group dynamics as humans social environments become more complex they acquire adaptations by way of group dynamics that enhance survival examples include mechanisms for dealing with status reciprocity identifying cheaters stress stressism altruism group decision leadership and intergroup relations also a combination of evolution and game, game theory has been used to explain the development and maintenance of cooperative behavior between individuals in a group bruce tuckman proposed a four stage model called tuckman stages for a group tuckman's model states the ideal group decision making process sh- should occur in four stages forming pretending to get on or get along with others storming letting down the politeness barrier and trying to get down the to the issues even if tempers flare norming getting used to each other and developing trust and productivity performing working in a group to a common goal on a highly efficient and cooperative basis tuckman later added a fifth stage for the dissolution of a group called adjourning adjourning may be also re- be referred to as mourning that is mourning the adjournment of a group this model refers to the overall pattern of a group but of course individuals within a group working in different ways if distress person is a group may never even get to the norming stage 
that should be first. Scott Peck developed stages for larger scale groups, uh, that is communities which are similar to Tuckman stages of groups, group development. Peck describes the stages of a community as pseudo community, A as emptiness, true community. Communities may be distinguished from other types and groups in Peck's view by the need of member need for members to eliminate barriers to communication in order to be able to form true community. Examples of common barriers are expectations and preoccupations, prejudices, ideology, counterproductive norms, theology and solutions. The need to yield, convert, fix or solve and the need to control. Community is born when its members reach a stage of emptiness or peace. Richard Hackman developed a synthetic research-based model for designing and managing work groups. Hackman suggested that groups are successful when they satisfy internal and external clients, develop capabilities to perform in the future, and when members find meaning and satisfaction in the group. Hackman proposed five conditions that increase the chance that groups will be successful. These include being a real team, which results from having a shared task, clear boundaries which clarify who is inside or who is outside the group, and stability in group membership, compelling direction, which results from a clean, challenging, and consequential goal, in enabling structure, which results from having tasks which are variety a group size that is not too large, talented group members who are at least moderate social skill, and among norms that specify appropriate behavior, supportive context which occurs in groups nested in larger groups. In uh, companies, supportive context involve their reward systems that reward performance and cooperation, an educational system that develops number, number skills, an information and material system that provides and needed information and raw materials. Expert coaching, which occurs on the rare occasions when group members feel they need help with the task or interpersonal issues. Hackman emphasizes that many team members are overbearing and undermine the, undermine the group effectiveness. Intra-group dynamics, also referred to as in-group, within-group, are commonly just group dynamics. Are the underlying process that give rise to a set of norms, roles, relations, and common goals that characterize a particular social group. Examples of groups include religious, political, military, and environmental groups, sports teams, work groups, and therapy groups. Amongst the members of a group, there is a state of interdependence through which the behaviors, attitudes, opinions, and experiences of each member are collectively influenced by the other group members. In many fields of research, there is an interest in understanding how group dynamics influence individual behavior, attitudes, and opinions. The dynamics of a particular group depend on how one defines the boundaries of the group. Often, there are distinct subgroups within a broad, more broadly defined group. For example, one could define U.S. residents as a group, but could also define a more specific set of U.S. residents. Exam, South Americans, North Americans, so okay. For each of these groups, there are distinct dynamics that can be discussed. Notably, on this very broad level, the study of group dynamics is similar to the study of culture. There are cultural variations, right? Group of formation starts with the psychological bond between individuals. The social cohesion approach suggests that group formation comes out of bonds of interpersonal attraction. In contrast, the society identify approach suggests that a group starts when a collection of individuals perceive what they share that they share some social category and that interpersonal attraction only secondarily enhances the connection between individuals. Additionally, from the social identity approach, group formation involves both identifying with some individuals and explicitly not identifying with others. So to say, a level of psychological distinctness, distinctiveness is necessary for group formation. Through interaction, Individuals begin to develop group norms, ro roles, and attitudes which define the group and are influenced, internalized through influenced behavior. Emergent groups arising from a relatively spontaneous process of group formation. For example, in response to a natural disaster, an emergent response group may vary, may form. These groups are characterized as having no pre-existing structure or prior experience working together. Yet these groups still express high levels of interdependence and coordinate language resources, coordinate knowledge, resources and tasks. Joining a group is determined by a number of different factors including an individual's personal traits, 
gender, social models such as need for affiliation, need for power, and need for intimacy, attachment style, and prior growth experiences. Groups can offer some advantage to its members that would not be possible if an individual decided to remain alone, including gaining social support in the forms of emotional support, instrumental support, and information support. It also offers friendship, potential new interests, learning new skills, and enhancing self-esteem. However, joining a group may also cost an individual time, effort, and personal resources as they may confront the social pressures and strive to reap the benefits that may be offered by the group. All of you are familiar with the WhatsApp groups, right? It's more of a nuisance. Okay. The Minimax principle is a part of social exchange theory that states that individual people will join and remain in a group that can provide them with the maximum amount of variable, valuable rewards while at the same time ensuring the minimum amount of cost to themselves. However, this does not necessarily mean that a person will join a group simply because the reward cost ratio seems attractive. According to Howard Kelly and uh, John Thibault, a group may be attractive to us in terms of cost and benefits, but the attractiveness alone does not determine whether or not we will join the group. Instead, our decision is based on two factors, our comparison level and our comparison level for alternatives. Groups can vary drastically from one another. Four categories of groups are intimacy groups, task groups, loose associations, and social categories. Primary groups are characterized by relatively small, long-lasting groups of individuals who share personally meaningful relationships. Since these groups often interact face to face, they know each other very well and are unified. Individuals that are a part of primary groups consider the group to be an important part of their lives. Consequently, members strongly identify with the group even without regular meetings. A social group is characterized by a formally organized group of individuals who are not as emotionally involved with each other as those in the primary group. These groups tend to be larger with the shorter memberships compared to primary groups. So the social groups do not have a st stable memberships since members are able to leave the social group and join new groups as they please. The goals of social groups are often task oriented as opposed to relationship oriented. Examples of social groups include co workers, clubs, and social sports teams. Collectives are characterized by large groups of individuals who display similar actions or outlooks. They are loosely formed, spontaneous and brief. Examples of collectives include a flash mob, an audience at a movie and a crowd watching a building burn. Categories are characterized by a collection of individuals who are similar in some way. Categories be and become groups when their similarities are have social implications. For this reason, categories can appear to be higher in NT, entitativity and essentialism than primary, social and collective groups. The social sciences group cohesion refers to the processes that keep members of a social group connected. Basically, for groups that should people like should like one another. Terms such as attraction, solidarity, and morale are often used to describe group cohesion. It is thought by thought to be one of the most important characteristics of a group and has been linked to group performance, intergroup conflict, and therapeutic changes. Group cohesion as a scientifically studied property of groups is commonly associated with Kurt Levin and his student, Leon Festinger. Levin identified group cohesion as the willingness of individuals to stick together and believe that without cohesion as a group could not ex exist. Basically, the people should like one another. There should be good chemistry. 
beliefs within the in group of based on how individuals of the, in the group see the other members individuals tend to be likable in group members in group members and deviate from unlikable group members making them a separate out group this is called the black sheep effect the way a person judges socially desirable and socially undesirable individuals depends upon whether they are part of the in group or out group this phenomenon has been later accounted for by subjective group dynamic theory according to this theory people de- derogate socially undesirable deviant in group members relative to out group members because they give a bad image of the in group and jeopardize people's social identity in more recent studies markers and colleagues have shown that it, this occurs more strongly with regard to in group full members than other members whereas new members of a group must prove themselves to the new full members to become accepted full members have undergone socialization and are already accepted within the group they are more privileged than newcomers but more responsibility to help the group achieve its goals marginal members are were once full members but lost membership because they failed to live up to the group's expectations they can rejoin the group if they go through re-socialization therefore full members behavior is paramount to define the in group's image bogart and ryan surveyed the development of new members stereotypes about in groups and out groups during socialization Results show that the new members judge themselves as consistent with the stereotypes of the in-groups even when they had recently committed to join these groups or existed as marginal members. They also tended to judge the group as a whole in an increasingly less positive manner after they become full members. However, there is no evidence that this affects the way they are judged by the other members. Nevertheless, depending on the self-esteem of the individual, members of the in-group may experience different private beliefs about the group's activities but will publicly express the opposite, that they actually share these beliefs. One member may not personally agree with something the group does but avoid the black sheep effect they don't like to be left out. They will publicly agree with the group and keep the private beliefs to themselves. If the person is privately self-aware, he or she is more likely to comply with the group even if they possibly have their own beliefs about the situation. In situations of hazing within fraternities and sororities on the college campuses, pledges may encounter this type of situation and may outwardly comply with the task that uh, they are forced to do regardless of the personal feelings about the Greek institution they are joining. This is done in an effort to avoid becoming an outcast of the group. outcasts who behave in a way that might jeopardize the group tend to be treated more harshly than the likable ones in a group creating a black sheep effect you want to be a black sheep in the group nobody likes to be a black sheep full members of a fraternity might treat the incoming new members harshly exist causing the pledges to decide if they approve of the situation and if they will voice that the disagreeing opinions about it. Individual behavior is influenced by a presence of others. <coughs> Groups also influence the individual's decision-making process. These include decisions related to in-group bias, persuasion, obedience, and group think. They are both, there are both positive and negative implications of group influence on individual behavior. This type of influence is often useful in the context of work settings, team sports, and political activism. However, the influence of groups on the individual can also generate extremely negative behaviors evident in Nazi Germany. The Maila Lai massacre and in the Abu Ghraib prison. The group structure is an internal framework that defines members' relations to one another over time. Frequently studied elements of group structure include roles, norms, values, communication patterns, and status differential. Group structure has also been defined as the underlying pattern of the roles, norms, and networks of relations among members that define and organize the group. Robots can be defined as a tendency to behave, contribute to, and interrelate with others in a particular way. Roles can be assigned formally, but more often are defined through the process of role differentiation. Role differentiation is a degree to which different group members have specialized functions. A group with a high level of role differentiation would be categorized as having many different roles that are specialized and narrowly defined. A key role in a group is a leader. any group leader so it needs a leader but there are other important roles as well including task roles relationship roles and individual roles functional task roles are generally defined in relation to the task the team is expected to perform individuals engaged in task roles focus on the goals of the group and on enabling the work that members do 
examples of task flows include coordinator, recorder, technician, etc. A group member engaged in a relationship role. A socio-economic role is focused on maintaining the interpersonal and emotional needs of the group members. Norms are the informal rules that groups adapt to regulate the members' behavior. Norms refer to what should be done and represent group value or judgments about the appropriate behavior in social situations. Although they are infrequently written down or even discussed, norms have a powerful influence on group behavior. There are a fundamental, they are a fundamental aspect of group structure as they provide direction and motivation and organize the social interactions with members. Norms are said to be emergent as they develop gradually throughout interactions between group members. While many norms are widespread throughout the society, groups may develop their own norms that members must uh, learn when they join the group. There are various types of norms including prescriptive, proscriptive, descriptive and injective. Prescriptive norms, the socially appropriate way to respond Okay, prescriptive norms, the social appropriate way to respond in a social situation or groups or what group members are supposed to do. The prescriptive norms, actions that uh, group members should not do. Prohibitive, descriptive norms describe what people actually do. Injective norms describe behaviors that people ought to do, more evaluative in nature than descriptive norms. Inter-member relations are the connections among the members of a group or the social network within a group. Group members are linked to one another at varying levels. Values are goals or ideas that serve as guiding principles for the group, like norms. Values can be communicated either explicitly or on an adult basis. Values can serve as a rallying point for the team. However, some values can also be dysfunction, can can also be dysfunction and can lead to poor decisions by the team. Communication patterns describe the flow of information within the group and they are typically described as either, either centralized or decentralized. With a centralized pattern, Communications tend to flow from one source to all group members. Centralized communications allows standardization of information, but they restrict the free flow of information. Decentralized communication makes it easy to share information directly between group members. When decentralized communication tend to flow more freely, but the delivery of information may not be as fast or accurate as with the centralized communication. Another potential downside of decentralized communication is the sheer volume of information that can be generated particularly with the electronic media. Status, status differentials are the relative differences in status among group members. When a group is first formed, the members may all, all be on the equal level, but over time certain members may acquire status and authority within the group. This can create what is known as pecking order within a group. Status can be determined by a variety of factors and characteristics including specific status characteristics or diffuse status characteristics. It is important that the other group members perceive an individual status to be warranted and deserved as otherwise they may not have authority within the group. Status differentials may affect the relative amount of pay among group members and they may also affect the group's tolerance to violation of group norms. Intergroup dynamics or intergroup relations refer to behavioral and psychological relationship between two or more groups. This includes perceptions, attitudes, opinions, and behaviors towards one, one's own group as well as those towards another group. 
in some cases intergroup dynamics is pro, pro social positive and beneficial in other cases intergroup dynamics can create conflict according to social identity theory intergroup conflict starts with the process of comparison between individuals in one group, the in-group to those of another group, the out-group. This comparison process is not unbiased and objective. Instead, it's a mechanism for enhancing one's self-esteem. Even without any intergroup interaction, individuals begin to show favoritism towards their own group and negative reactions towards the out-group. This conflict can result in prejudice, stereotypes and discrimination. Intergroup conflict can uh, be highly competitive, especially for social groups with a long history of conflict. Group dynamics and team building are based fundamentally on the relationships among the people involved. It's both courteous and sensible to assure that the members all are introduced to each other and that they are offered opportunities to get to know each other and to build relationships. A yeah, group of team with the members who know each other well is likely to be more effective. People tend to be more offer more of themselves when they are with the people whom they know than when they are with the strangers. It is therefore a good idea to spend some time helping people acquainted, get acquainted with one another. Often we assume people know each other when they do not. A common feeling among newcomers is that the more, more senior members of the group are somewhat elusive. This is because the senior members know each other better and are able to establish patterns of communication. They have past experiences in common and they may forget to explain certain references to the newcomers. This can lead to a feeling of exclusion and it's, if it is not correct, the newcomers might leave the group. It is the responsibility of the current members to help the new members get oriented into the group and its members. It is like a new students joining a institute. There are many ways to accomplish this. People who have created activities called icebreakers or get acquainted activities. A search on the internet using either of those terms will produce many examples. These simple games can get people interacting with each other. Each other. One popular icebreaker is to divide the group into pairs and have one person interview the other for a few minutes and then switch. In any group of individuals brought together for a purpose, every one of those participants will likely have a slightly different expectation of what, what's going to happen and how it is going to happen. This underlying expectation may color an individual's reactions to the stated agenda. Therefore, it's a good idea to spend a minute or two clarifying members' expectations. It can even become a part of getting acquainted states. A simple open-ended question can put the expectations on the table. What do you expect us to accomplish today? Groups tend to form for one of two reasons, either for purely social purpose or to getting, get something accomplished. A team is a group that has a job to do, like project teams. IT field is very common, whether as paid participants or as volunteers, it's a group that has spent some time together, and whether in smaller increments over a long period of time or by spending weekends, are more working together on something. It's a group that achieves cohesiveness. A team strength is found in the relationships among the team members. It's a group with a common ob objective whose members are very clear about working toward one purpose. It's a group whose members are interdependent, whereas other groups may recognize the strength of each member. Team members rely on the strength of each member to accomplish something. An ideal team has a distinct, has a number of distinct characteristics and they fall into three areas, their feedback and communication behaviors, their behavior and conduct courtesies, conduct courtesies and their ways of approaching tasks and problems. Teams and groups are living organisms with certain predictable stages of development. One characterization of the progression of team development has been depicted by a series of steps on a graph. Graph one axis represents success with the tasks that are more and more complicated and the other represents the amount of time and effort that the group has invested in becoming a team. Arriving at the decision can be a difficult process for a group, especially when there are too many members. Many groups resort to voting to decide issues. When possible, it is useful to work to achieve consensus. More can be accomplished with the groups that can be achieved by individuals alone, but to be productive, a group must remain focused and healthy. One analogy is to liken a group to a motor vehicle. A group, like a vehicle, 
can get someone to a place faster. Most of us are more interested in our destination that we are in the way, then we are in the vehicle that carries us there. However, if we do not pay attention to the vehicle, it will fall into disrepair. A group fuel needs fueling and maintenance like vehicles. Another analogy is that of a garden, our plants, one plants a garden and then tends to it giving it giving it water and nutrients, removing the weeds and with the sufficient time and attention the garden flourishes. A group two needs nourishment and to have its weeds, inappropriate behaviors removed. Theory and research suggests that people need to be connected to other people and that they experience significant psychological distress if these uh, connections are severe. Human beings have a pervasive drive to form and maintain at least a minimum quantity of lasting, positive and impactful interpersonal relationships. They liken the need to belong to other basic needs such as hunger or thirst. Just as an adequate diet can undermine one's health, separation can lead to pronounced psychological discomfort. Groups play an essential role in satisfying the need to belong. Years ago, Freud argued that memberships in groups promotes mental health because groups take the place of childhood families when people reach adulthood. Freud developed the concept of transference when he observed that some of his patients reacted to him as if they were children and he was in their, their parent. parent. He theorized that, that a similar transference occurs in groups when individuals accept leaders as authority figures. This transference leads to identification with the leader and other group members comes to take the place of sibling. Group membership can be an unconscious means of regaining the security of the family and the emotional ties that bind members to the groups are like the ties that bind children to the family. Loneliness is a profoundly negative experience for negative people, so negative that people often seek professional help simply to alleviate the discomfort. Loneliness also tends to be present whenever people suffer from depression. Anxiety, personality disorders and interpersonal hostility. Prolonged periods of loneliness have been linked to physical illnesses such as cirrhosis of the liver, hypertension, heart disease and leukemia. Loneliness may also attack the immune system. Individuals who are extremely lonely have higher levels of Epstein-Barr virus and lower levels of B lymphocytes. Both of these physical characteristics are associated with the reductions in immunity and increased vulnerability to mononucleosis. Ways draw an interesting distinction between social loneliness, which occurs when people lack ties to other people in general, and emotional loneliness, which is the absence of meaningful intimate relationship with another person. Transitory groups do little to prevent either social or emotional loneliness, but uh, more involving groups are sufficient to prevent social loneliness. A tight-knit group of friends or a family may be so emotionally involving that members never feel the lack of a dyadic love relationship in that people who belong to the more groups and organizations report less loneliness than those who keep to themselves. Groups with extensive interconnections among all the members provide a particularly powerful antidote to loneliness. People who belong to groups are healthier than individuals who have few ties to other people because they suffer fewer psychological problems than physical illnesses. People who belong to groups are healthier than individuals who have few ties to other people because they suffer fewer psychological problems and physical illnesses. People who belong to groups are healthier than they even live longer. When people find themselves in stressful, difficult circumstances, they often cope by forming or joining a group. In times of trouble such as illness, divorce, or loss, people seek out other people. When students first go to college, they go by forming extensive social networks of peers and friends. People who have been diagnosed with serious illnesses often take part in small discussion groups with other patients. People who have personal problems such as general feeling of unhappiness or dissatisfaction seek help from friends and relatives before turning to mental health professionals. 
individuals experiencing work related related stress such as layoffs time pressures or inadequate supervision go by joining with coworkers groups counter stress by providing members with social support personal actions and resources that help them cope with minor aspects of everyday living daily hazards and more significant life crises group members provide emotional support when they complement and encourage one another express their relationship friendship for others and listen to others problems without offering criticism or suggestion they offer information they offer informational support when they give directions offer advice and make suggestions about how to solve a particular problems they also offer task support and tangible assistance to one another more or less noted above most groups offer the members a sense of belonging the need to belong is satisfied when people join groups for others group support may reinforce a sense of worthiness and reassure the unique worth of the person at the times of duress such support has often been associated with the decreased levels of distress and depressed depressive behavior social support is particularly valuable when stress levels increase stressful life circumstances increase the risk of psychological and physical illness but groups can serve as a protective buffer against these negative consequences on the whole one can never work in isolation social interaction is a must for everybody human beings as well as animals birds and insects there should be synergy that is all should work in unison to achieve common goals nowadays people are addicted to social networking which are virtual groups people don't talk about these groups because it's all uh, no reason social isolation will lead to depression and all kinds of mental this is physical illness too sometimes we are forced to be in social isolation attributed to force major attributed to god nature like pandemics etc situations like those these are beyond our control as much as possible socialize with others to the extent deemed necessary depending on work family ties etc group dynamics is basically difference in behavior of human beings as an individual and they are and they are part of a group even animals behavior varies depending on whether it is alone or in a group we are aware that some animals attack as a pack group like for example wolves even birds migrate as a group even cattle move as groups why not human beings for our own good debates discussion on topics like this can go on forever any anyway, let me call it today we'll meet again real soon some of the statements used expressed up solely mind based on limited knowledge gained over six decades always watch these videos with closed caption for absolute 100% comprehension as per my sincere recommendation at least zillion times so far i know i have to complete the presentation within 20 minutes max which is a time limit i said myself to retain the viewers attention as a norm i know nowadays i exceed this time limit since i make honest attempts to cover the selected topic more elaborately including so many intricate fine details referring a wide variety of sources in particular wikipedia quite extensively besides articles and books published recently besides of course i had my own salt and pepper and masala based on my personal experiences so far in my life and also intuition stay at home as much as possible to maintain social distancing attributed to pandemic novel covid-19 and prolong your lifespan lead a healthy life god alone can put a stop to natural and unnatural events maybe by our cyber or events like pandemics which may lead to an apocalypse and extinction of all sentient species on earth for no fault of the earth rest in peace and 